so thankful this morning, man, that, uh, that God's in this house. It feels good in here today. Man, it feels good in here today. I'm going to be honest with you, last month, the last month, it feels like there's been a transition. And uh, I've been praying for 13 years, and uh, it feels like it's here. How many of y'all are glad it's here? Come on, come on. If you're glad it's here, the rest of you, go ahead and give God praise. Because here's the deal, you, nobody's going to stop him. Nobody's going to stop him. Amen. I'm going to welcome each and every one of you here today and all those who are watching by Facebook, website, church app, YouTube. There's all kinds of ways that you can watch. But how many of you will be thankful when all of us can get back in church together as one? Amen. Amen. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're heading there. Sunday school was this morning. And I want to praise God that uh, if, if you're not in Sunday school, listen, it needs to be promoted a little bit. You, you need to get in Sunday school. You need to get in a small group. Where you can learn, uh, go deeper with Jesus Christ. And so Sunday school is important. Matter of fact, statistics say you're only as healthy as your Sunday school is. So really, you want to see the vibrance. Anybody, listen, Led Zeppelin can draw, draw a crowd. But if you really want to grow in God, get in Sunday school. Get in a, a real life group and let God, let God grow you. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be here today? One more time. Let's give God a praise in here today. Amen. Man, thank y'all. Hallelujah. All right, y'all ready for a word? The rest of y'all ready for a word? I, I, I'm ready to give it to you today. Amen. I want to do uh, part four. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to conclude this. Dana asked me today. She said, are you going uh, to stop on part four? I, I don't know. I, I don't really know because God has really fed me through this series. But uh, part four in the series we call Pursue God, Don't Quit in the Deal. Come on, somebody. Don't quit in the dip. Turn to your neighbor real quick, six feet apart. Don't quit in the dip. Tell somebody else who's listening to you. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. And listen to this. It's crazy. One thing that I can promise you, you can take what I'm getting ready to tell you to the bank. You can do this. It's hard being a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled man, woman, teenager of God living in a sin-filled world. It's tough. It's hard. And listen, another thing I can promise you, right after God gives you a, a God dream, or you, he feel, you feel like he's taking you from amen to amen, from glory to glory, and you just got out of a victory, I can promise you, I promise you, the next thing in your life is a dip. Is a dip. Is a dip. It shocks me how Christians are acting right now. We, we say we read the Bible. We say we, we go to church. But we're allowing this world to dictate what God is doing, trying to do through us. Listen, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm speaking life over y'all today. The Bible is real. It's so easy to say, yes, yep, praise God, it sure is, Pastor. But when reality hits, and you're standing on anything but the Word of God, you're going to waver to the left, you're going to go to the right, you're going to listen to humanity. You're going to listen to people. But I'm here today to give God some praise. Because what he started in us, somebody say, he's going to finish in us. Come on, somebody, help me today. And here's one thing else I found. It's not over till God says it's over. It's not over till God says it's over. And I wrote in my own personal note, you're never too old. Some of you done retired God. You may have retired from work, but listen, if you're still breathing... Facebook, y'all lean, lean in, lean in. If, if you're still breathing, God's not finished. There's still purpose in your life. He still works in your life. That's why they call them generals in the faith. That's why they call them generals in the faith. You're never too old. You're never too damaged. You're never too messed up. Come on, somebody. You're never too far from God that he can't pull you out of the dip. Mm. He'll pull you out of the dip. The Bible says... That God put a good work in you. A good work. Not, not, a, not a fair work. Not a halfway faithful work. Not I'll be committed when I want to be committed. Work. God, the Bible says that God put a good work. Everybody say good work. Come on, the rest of them say good work. And he put enough Holy Ghost in you. That you don't have to give up. You don't have to stop. You don't have to quit. Or you can't be defeated. So what I'm saying is this. If God be for you. How many of y'all believe that? Watch this. Let's start acting like it then. Let's start acting like it then. When hell comes against you, let heaven stand up. 
When people rise up against you, you don't say what they say. You don't have to cope to their level. You don't have to go down. You still stand. You stand. As for me and mine, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah. See, but some of you, some people don't know how to get out of the dip. Some people do not know how to get out of the dip. Some people are camping out in the dip. <laughs> some people has accepted the dip as their new address. Some people are stuck in the dip. So I want to give you two quick things. Everybody say, yeah, right. <laughs> I want to give you two smooth moves, yeah, about how you get out of this dip. How you get out of this dip. I've given you, all, I've given you a bunch of information. And so if you, if you remain stuck, it's because you like it. How I many you know some people like to be stuck? I'm preaching better than y'all acting on a Sunday morning. You can give them all the information. You can give them word of God. Matter of fact, they know the word of God. They'll tell you what scripture says. But some people, they love to be stuck in the dip. But I'm at a house today. You showed up at, the, at a good place. You showed up at a place that says that God can touch you, deliver you, and set you free. We refuse as a church, as a people, to allow you to remain stuck in a dip. Everybody look at that one more time. Say, don't quit in that dip. Don't quit, don't quit in that dip. Say it again. Come on, help me. Don't quit in that dip. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit. So what's the first thing you have to do to get out of the dip? The first thing that you have to do to get out of this dip. And this is tough. Nobody likes this kind of preaching. But I, I'm not here to give you a vacation Bible school sermon. I'm here to watch the church live victorious. To lay hands upon the sick and watch them recover. Listen, if God saved 3,000 in one day and 5,000 the next day, he can save 8,000 today. He can do it. That's the kind of God I serve. I'm sticking to it. I believe the Bible. So the number one thing you have to do is identify the dip. Identify the dip. Everybody say that with me. Identify the dip. Come on, one more time. Identify the dip. This is where most people, <laughs> can I preach this a little bit? This is where most people have the hardest time. You know why? Because it's so easy to play the blame game. Everybody gets a trophy. All you got to do is show up and everybody gets a trophy. My brother told me, he said, my brother's a radiation oncologist in, in Louisville, Kentucky. And he said, Brian, if you make, if I was an A student and somebody made a C minus, he, they said they still get to graduate. Everybody wants a trophy. Everybody thinks that when you get to heaven, watch, I'm going to mess some good people up today. Everybody thinks when you get to heaven, everybody's going to get the crown. No. You got to work for it. This giving stuff away, giving trophies away for everybody who's, who, listen, when I, when I was a baseball coach, and I wasn't a very good coach, watch this, I didn't give everybody a trophy. I did not give everybody a trophy. And watch this, when you die, if you're unfaithful, and you're not sold out, and you're not a soul winner, and you're just getting by, getting by, when you get to heaven, you will not have a crown to lay at Jesus' feet. That's what the Bible says. This little... Fluff gospel that we live in America and do what you want to do. And I am who I am today because of my daddy, my mama, my grandpa, my grandmother. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. All you are doing is justifying the way you can live. At some point in your life, let, let me drive this. I'll give you all some good news in a second. At some point in your life, you've got to examine, examine, examine your own heart. You've got to look inside yourself. You've got to quit blaming your mama. You've got to quit blaming the preacher. You've got to quit blaming the deacons. You, I'm preaching better than y'all are looking at me today. At some point in your life, you've got to ask yourself some hard questions. Hard questions. At some point in your life, you've got to take a spiritual inventory of your own nasty self. My granny used to say it like this. <laughs> Granny's with the Lord. She died at the age of 86, but she's still preaching. My granny used to say it like this. She said, Brian Keith. And when she said Brian Keith, she just didn't say Brian. She said, when she added Keith, watch out. Granny getting ready to preach. 
And don't tell me women can't preach because my granny was a preaching machine. She would say it, Brian Keith, if everywhere you go, there's a problem. If you go to work and there's a problem. If you go to work and there's a problem, hallelujah. If you, if, if you go to church and there's a problem. If you go to school and there's a problem. If you go to the grocery store and there's a problem. I'm preaching really good this morning. If you go out to eat in your meal, every meal you get, bad, 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 bad. And there's a problem. My granny said, at some point in your life, young man, you've got to do a spiritual inventory because there's a common denominator in all the problems. Hey, at some point in your life, you've got to look in. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I don't apologize. Quit blaming everybody. The church needs to hear this. The government, you know why the government's acting like they are? They lost. Can't expect lost people to act saved. <laughs> Just because they're Republican, Democrat, Independent, Baptist, Pentecostal, that don't mean they're born again and know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. There's got to be a time in your life that you have a head-on collision with the Holy Ghost. Mm. My grin would say, to fix the problem, you got to identify the dip. How many of you know you got a, a dipstick preacher? See, y'all say amen about that. <laughs> it's okay to laugh by the way You're, Christians should be the most happiest people when we walk in here you should see nothing but teeth when you walk in here man you should feel the presence of God from the back to the front from side to side you know why nobody wants nothing to do with the church because the church looks just like the world I'm preaching good hey yeah I'm going to get some turtle man on y'all here in just a minute yeah 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 so, settle down. Say, no. Oh, oh. You say, Brian, why do you? Because listen, when you experience God, the light comes on. I, I, I remember what it was like being a lost man drunk in a bar. I remember what it was like living for the world. And I remember that. And that's what blew my mind about Jesus. I said, God, I remember what it was like on a bar stool. I remember what it was like living in a dark, cold place where I didn't even know you, feel you. So if I can feel the devil, how much better and stronger are you? This stuff's real. That Holy Ghost is real. Those signs, gifts, wonders, and miracles are still available today. I'm tired of the church looking defeated. It's time that the church would stand up, get that T-rail backbone, throw them shoulders back, hold that head up, and say, God, I'm coming after you. Satan, if you get in my way, I'm going to knock you from the north, the east, the south, and the west. I got something in me that nobody can buy. I got, hey, I know Jesus. Hey, I know him. I know him. You say, Brian, but I've seen preacher after preacher and deacon after deacon and elder after elder and church member after church member fall away. Yeah. Did you help them back up? Which we're the church. We have got our PhDs in putting Jesus back on the cross. We've got our PhDs in murdering other Christians. But the last time I read the Bible, when a man was in the ditch, the good Samaritan come along and said, hey, let me help you out. We need some people. Listen to me. If we're going to change this world like I, I know we are, I don't think no more. I know. I don't have a think so gospel. I got a know so gospel. We will change South Central. Everybody in here today, look at me. You will not die and go to hell. I refuse to allow anybody who steps in my path, in my direction, to not hear about Jesus Christ. You will hear the name Jesus in my life. I believe that. So y'all ready for number two? And I'll get y'all out of here. Number one, you got to identify the dip. Everybody say identify the dip. The rest of you say identify the dip. All of us say identify the dip. Look at me. You may be the dip. 
Well, y'all didn't like it, did you? Turn to your neighbor. I know y'all like this. Tell them, you may be the dip. Yeah, it didn't follow the dip. It didn't follow the dip. Number two, <laughs> this is crazy. Ask God, what are you trying to teach me in the dip? You got to identify the dip. And number two, God, here's what we just lose it. Because we blame everybody else. If men would be men and lead your house the way God has designed and created and set the family up. He did not create the husband to be the mean man. He did not create the husband to be the boss man. He created to be the God man. Men, lead your family. You be the man of your family. Somebody say amen. Man, I don't care if your wife's sitting beside you. I want you to look at him and say, I'm the man now. I was going to say something. Holy Ghost, stop me. All this transgender crap. I'm going to tell you right now, y'all, lean in. I'm going to probably go to jail with this, okay? If you're a man, you go to the man bathroom. If you're, if you're a lady... If you're a lady, you, you go to the women's restroom. Don't you be coming up in my bathroom. I'm going to stand on the word of God and tell God that, that God takes me out or you bury me. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. Somebody help me preach in this house today. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. And you say, Brian, I don't know what I am. Do this. <laughs> That's all y'all got to do. That's all y'all got to do. Look down. And whatever you see is what you be. <laughs> y'all may enjoy get ready because they probably going to come after me. You better be ready next Sunday. Hallelujah. To stand up in this pulpit and do not back down. Do not get away. Stand on the word of God. It don't matter who comes against you. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? I need somebody to stop right there and give God a hallelujah anyhow praise in this place. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Woo. We've talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, talked about it. I just believe, man. George Michael said, you got to have faith, the faith, the faith. Ooh, you got to have faith, the faith. Y'all, I worked hard on this. <laughs> just got to have faith, man. Just got to have faith. Why does it shock y'all? Watch. Why does it shock you that the government's coming against the church? <laughs> Why does it shock y'all that people don't know who they are? Because I'm telling you, if you get touched by God, if you have a Damascus Road experience where God demasks you, you'll know who you are in Jesus Christ. You'll know who you are. I know who I am. Watch this. I love y'all, but y'all don't define me. I love this church, but watch this. Baptist faith does not, <laughs> not define me. The Word of God defines me. Listen, if we'll get this, if we'll get this Word, I promise you things will start changing you know why the devil's after us? It's because he says, if you don't know who you are, you're going to be tossed to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. He said, you got to be like a, like a horse with a bit in its mouth. That when the owner pulls it to the right, you say, yes, sir. But I'm telling you, God is doing something in this church. Here's what I found to be true in my own journey with God. God is always preparing us for the dip, in the dip, for something else. It's training grounds. Training grounds. It's training grounds. Why are some of y'all having marital problems? You not passed the test. Hmm. Why, why are some of y'all still angry? You've not passed the test. God is preparing me and you for something ahead of us. Y'all got that? Y'all understand that? He's not just the God of today. He's the God of tomorrow. God knows exactly what's going on in your mind right now. And that's scary. God knows it. Even through this COVID season, you realize next month will be a year. A year. Let me ask y'all something, Elkhorn. Let's lean in. I'm, I'll preach here in just a moment. 
Have you learned anything through COVID? Are we going to be the same church? If we're the same church pre-COVID as we are post-COVID, we didn't learn a dang thing. My, my question is this. Have you learned anything? Have we learned anything through COVID? Because I promise you, Joy, there was a lesson to be learned. Through sickness. Through sickness. There's a lesson to be learned. Through sickness. Hallelujah. Through trials and tears. Turmoil. Through it all. God is teaching us in the dip. You know why I know he's, he's always working on Sometimes God will allow the dip to teach a lesson. But if you never learn the lesson, you'll never pass the test. And if you don't ever pass the test, you'll never graduate. And if you don't ever graduate, you'll stay in the dip. You'll stay in the dip. So this is crazy. This is going totally against modern culture. Because here's what we do. If something's going on in our life, we blame God. It's the first one. And God redeemed us, saved us, sent his son to die for us, and we're blaming him. Here's something else we do. We blame the people around us. We blame, but God said, I'm trying to teach you while you're in the dip. While these lessons are going on, what are you learning? Because if we're not careful, this is what God spoke into my spirit. You will camp out in the dip. You'll want everybody to feel sorry for you. You'll you want, you want everybody to look at you and say, oh, here, let, let me help you. How many times? You say, well, Brian, the Bible says, no, don't quote Scripture unless you know what you're talking about. Don't, don't quote Scripture unless you know what you're talking about. Because I'm telling you, God is doing something amazing at this church. God has had us in the dip for almost a year. Did he know about it? Absolutely. He did. But here's what I think what God is trying to teach me as your pastor to teach you. Are we going to come out the same pre as we are post? We got to learn, we got to learn, we got to learn a lesson. Watch what the Bible says. This is crazy. And listen, don't make the dip your eternal address. Mike, what's your address? Six, six, six. Won't you turn that six, six, six into a seven, seven, seven? I'm going to say it again. What's your address? Is it six, six, six or seven, seven, seven? The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Y'all ready? James 1, 2 through 4. Listen, this hurts. When I, when I was studying this, I'm like, golly. Lord, this is, this is something right here. But watch what Jesus says in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Y'all ready? Consider it pure joy. Uh-oh. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. How many of y'all like that verse? And he, he tells you, because listen, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance, watch, finish its work so that you may be, uh-oh, mature, complete, not lacking anything. Huh. Let me read it again. Let it finish its course. There's a season for everything. But there's never a season to quit. He said, let, let it finish its course. Let it finish its time. Because it's going to make you mature. It's going to complete you. And you're not going to lack anything. Come on, somebody. See, watch. Everybody wants maturity. Everybody wants to be complete. And nobody don't want to lack anything. And God says, the only way, watch this, Bobby. He said, the only way you're going to be mature, the only way you're going to be complete, and the only way you're not going to lack anything is if you go through some stuff, some junk in your trunk. Everybody's got a Nineveh. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got a trial. Everybody's got a test. Everybody's got a circumstance. When I, I went through DKA, that's diabetic, keto acid, this, this, other stuff. My sugar was over three, 400. And I went to the hospital. And man, I was laying there flat in my bed. And I was looking up at the ceiling tile. I could count all the little dots in the ceiling tile. I didn't like it. But I learned some valuable 
valuable lessons flat on my back. See, sometimes God will allow to lay, he'll lay you down so the only thing you can do is look up. Sometimes God will allow a situation in your life to see how you're going to act and how you're going to react. It's hard. This is tough preaching. I wish I could stand up here today and say, you know what? Oh, it's going to be a, watch, I am going to say that. It will be okay. Okay. You will get through this stuff. You will not be defeated if you don't stop or quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. And oh, by the way, let me preface this a little bit. It's still coming. You'll get through, watch. <laughs> You'll get through one test. There'll be another one. You'll get through this. There'll be a bigger one. Well, why does God got to do that? He's trying to mature you. Watch, watch. I'm, is everybody good? Everybody good? I'm almost done. He's trying to complete you. What he started in you, he's going to complete in you. He's trying to lead God and direct us. You won't listen to the world's voice, but you'll listen to God's voice. He's training us. Whew. Feel the Holy Ghost. Mature, complete, and lacking nothing. Not lacking anything. Well, that's what the Bible says. So you know what that tells me? I'm going to go totally against Baptist culture. I'm going to go totally against religion. Here's what it's saying. God says, I have made you to be mature, complete, and lacking nothing. Y'all chew on that one for a little bit. Complete. Everybody say complete. Mature. And here's where Baptists go off left field and lacking nothing. But watch this. You ready? Here's how you're going to get it. Test. Trials. Circumstances, situations, bad doctor's reports, health issues. It's life. It's life. You say, Brian, I don't like this sermon. Well, the reason why you don't is because you're immature. You're not complete. God's trying to give you a word today to make you think. Watch. Hallelujah. I feel it. Let me teach why God's speaking. Some of you are blaming you are your past, and God's talking to you right now. He's talking to you right now. It, it's not what? It's not your spouse. It's not your pastor. It's not your teacher at school. It's so easy to blame people. At some point in your life, I promise y'all, when we stand before Jesus Christ, it won't be a crowd like this. It'll be just you and Jesus Christ. Amen? Everybody wants maturity. But the only way you're going to get maturity and completeness <laughs> and lacking nothing is you're going to have a trial, you're going to have a test, you got to go through them. And how many of y'all remember this? I remember this growing up. The older generation may remember this too. Your, your mom or your grandma would look at you and they'd go like this, don't you test me. How many generations? Y'all raise your hands. I want to see that one. How many of y'all remember somebody in your family looking, especially my granny, my granny, boy, don't you test me. And I started thinking about that. I wish I'd have had that verse when Granny said that. I said, Granny, what James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says. Because me testing you, Granny, will make you stronger. <laughs> make you more mature. I'm joking. Y'all looking at me like, boy, boy, then it fell off. I wrote this down. I got sweat going in my eyes. How in the world can we spiritually get promoted if we keep rejecting God's curriculum? How can God promote you if you keep rejecting his curriculum? You keep rejecting his word. You never pass the test. You, 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 you're the same wife. I you're the same today as you was one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. Where's the mature Christians in this church today? Where's the complete Christians in this church today? Where's the older women taking care of the younger women, raising them up? I don't like preaching like it because I'm talking to you. Oh, we're good. We're, we're experts about degrading and putting people on the cross. 
When was the last time you reached into a ditch and helped them out? Where's the, where's the older men in this church? The elders. Raising up the young guns. Investing in their life. Where's the older married couples? Looking at the new married, the newlyweds. The hot steaming rocking marriage has still got it going on. Looking at them and saying, man, let me help you. Boy, I knew, hallelujah, it's okay. But we want to be promoted. <laughs> we want God to help us. But when was the last time you reached down and got somebody out of a ditch? How in the world can we get spiritually promoted if we keep rejecting God's curriculum? Listen, I'm done. You can learn a lesson. Here's, here's the way you learn a lesson if you conquer the deal. The only way you're going to learn a lesson <laughs> is if you conquer the dip. Watch this. And the dip doesn't mean, I hear this all the time, the dip doesn't mean that God's done with you. The dip doesn't mean that you've been defeated. You know what the dip means? That you've not been defeated. You've not been defeated. And so I'm going to ask y'all today, as the praise team makes their way up here, I want y'all to listen to this. Abraham had a 20-year dip. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, well, Brian, I've been in this for a year. <laughs> Trade places with Abraham. Abraham had a 20-year dip. Job. Now think about this. He lost 10 children. I've lost two. I can't imagine losing 10. He lost his livestock, his house. His three best friends said, man, what have you done wrong? You've got to have sin in your life. His wife said, what kind of God do you serve? Won't you just cuss him and die? And I love Job. Job said, no, 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 no. I don't understand all the dips in my life. I don't understand what God's doing in my life. But I know that I know that I know that I know my Redeemer lives. I'm not back into hell. That's what we need today. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. Genesis 50, verse 20. Joseph had a 13-year dip. He got sold into slavery. His family rejected him. You know why they rejected him? Because he was a dreamer. Watch, God just spoke this into me. Some of you are dreamers. Don't let the outside have influence on the inside to make you stop dreaming. Keep dreaming. I'm still dreaming. I'm still dreaming. He had a 13-year dip. Watch this. Watch what Joseph said. Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me. But God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. I'm going to read that again because God, Satan intended for evil, but God intended for good. Satan intended for evil, but God intended for good. I wish I had a song. I would have. Satan intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. Satan intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. I feel a song birthing right there. Hey, right there it is, right there. Hey, hey. Yeah. Satan intended for evil, but God intended it for good. Uh, watch. To what? Wait, why? Why? Why is God allowing this? I got an answer for you. Imagine I'm going to point them back to the Bible. I just can't believe I'm doing that. But this is a, a, to accomplish what is now being done for the saving of many lives. Could it be you're going through some hell to give somebody some heaven? You're, you're going through some stuff in your life. And God's sitting there going, I've got you in the dip. I got you in the valley. I got you on the mountain. I got you wherever you're at. I'm not going to lose, lose you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm in the dip. I'm on the mountain. I'm everywhere you are because I live in you. At some point in your life, church, you've got to make your mind up. Y'all believe this stuff? If not, let's go home. Come on. I, I, I want to have some church. Let's have it. I'm ready. Because I've read the Bible. God's going to pour out His Spirit. Not just upon men. 
upon all mankind. That your sons and daughters will dream. Have vision. Prophesy. And God said, I'm going to do it for everybody. He's going to do it for everybody. Just because, watch, y'all sung this. Just because you don't see God moving doesn't mean God isn't working. Whew, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Just because you don't see God moving doesn't mean He's not working. Right now, some of y'all got a problem. I'm not going to lie. You're in a ditch. You're in a dip. Watch this. How many of you know God's working? Think about this. Abraham was getting ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Should I feel it? He kept saying, Daddy, where's the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? This is a real story, by the way. We read it like a fairy tale on a vacation Bible school. But this is real. Daddy, where's the sacrifice? He said, God will provide. God will provide. Daddy, he asked him three times. Matter of fact, he packed the wood. Isaac in the Bible is a type of Jesus. Jesus was going up the hill of Golgotha. Packing the cross, packing the wood. Father, is there any other way? I will provide. I love this story. As they were going up the mountain, they didn't see the sacrifice coming on the other side. They didn't see the lamb on the other side of the mountain. It's there. Here's what I'm telling all of us here today. Even though you can't see God working, He's working. Amen. Somebody give Him praise in this place. You may not see Him. You may not feel Him. He's working. You may have a messed up, dysfunctional family, but it's working. Your kids may be on drugs, but it's working. They may be backslidden. They may be out of God's will, but it's working. So, uh, here's the deal. I want to I end with this. When I was growing up, <laughs> we had an ice cream truck that would go around the neighborhood. I, 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 tell, I just told y'all my age right there. Had an ice cream truck. But watch this, Willie. I, I didn't know it was an ice cream truck. You know why I didn't know it was an ice cream truck? My grandfather told me it was a music truck. <laughs> he, told me was a, he told me it was a music truck. We well, played music. And I'm like, I've I, I never seen a truck play music. Well, every day, I would miss my blessing, Chris. Because the ice cream truck was a music truck to me. But it had the merchandise inside. I'd wave at it. I like that song, sir. Y'all remember that crazy music? But as a small kid, I said, yes, here comes a music truck. And my papa would smile because he had to pay. True, true story. Until one day, my granny. That's why I love my granny. My granny stopped me, Beth. And I said, Granny, I like it. My, I, I mean, I like that music truck. And she said, do what? I said, Papa told me that's a music truck. And she said, when she went, I knew there was more to the music truck. She told me that there was ice cream on the music truck. Y'all, I had to go to counseling. No, I'm joking. I did really. The music truck had ice cream. But I've been sitting back day after day after day, waving at my blessing going by, waving at the bomb pops going by, waving. And so my granny said, I want to show you what's on the ice cream truck. <laughs> And Granny showed me some heavenly bomb pops. The red, white, blue. Come on, somebody. And my papa figured out that I learned what was up on the music truck. Because every day, listen, I didn't ask for permission. Every day, the music would fill the atmosphere. And little B. Ralph, little B. Tyler. 
I would take off toward the music truck knowing there was something inside the music truck that could fill me up and satisfy my needs. So I wouldn't even ask Papa. I would run to the music truck and I would stand there and say, sir, I want a bomb pop. And he'd hand me a bomb pop and he'd say, that's 50 cents. And I, I didn't sit there and debate him. I received my bomb pop. And I say, Papa gonna pay you. <laughs> See, y'all missing the whole story. <laughs> y'all missing the whole story. I'm just here to announce today. There's so much more out there than the music. There's so much more out there than the church. There's so much more out there. Don't miss your heavenly ice cream this morning. Don't miss the heavenly ice cream this morning. So here's what I'm saying. There's, I didn't even know there was more. Until I went. <laughs> so don't quit in the dip. Come on somebody. Don't quit in the dip. Say it one more time. Come on. Don't quit in the dip. And if you're ready for some heavenly ice cream, I want you to stand to your feet all over this house. I want you to put your hands together. And I want you to open your mouth. And I want you to give God some heavenly praise in this house. Come on, turn it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much more. So much more. So much more. So if you're ready, I hear the music playing. And some of all, all of you here is just a song. But there's purpose behind the words. And until you activate the words in your life and the words become real, you'll miss your blessing every Sunday at church. You'll be here, but you'll stand there, you'll sit there. Don't miss your heavenly ice cream. That was the word God spoke to me. So you tell them. You say, Brian, God don't say that. He didn't tell you. He told me. Don't, don't, don't miss your blessing this morning. Some of you heard the music. My question to you is this. There's more. I refuse to believe that we have found everything that we need right now. There's so much more. So much more. So in Jesus Christ's name, this altar is open. Come get you some heavenly ice cream. Get out of the deal. Get out of the deal. Identify the deal and ask God, 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 today, what do you want to teach me through this deal? What do you want to teach me through this deal? And watch God work. Father God, have your way. Bless this time. Bless your people. And God, I pray they never quit in the deal. They never quit in the deal. No matter what. Through these trials, through these tests. May the spirit of perseverance make us mature, make us complete. Where we're lacking nothing. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. This altar is open. You come. If God is dealing with you, you come. Some of you are thinking about quitting. Don't quit in the deal.